Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And thank God. He's an awesome God. He's greatly to be praised this morning. We give God thanks and praise for each of you. We direct your attention to the Gospel of John, chapter 20. We can either do the Luke 24 text or the John 20 text, but since we started in John, I choose to go to that text again this morning as we continue to talk about the resurrection, because on next Sunday, we're going to be talking, well, I believe we're going to be talking about the benefits of the resurrection, and those are many, many. And I heard uh, a message this morning from Rev. Manuel that talked about some of the benefits as well. I think we're doing the same thing for this month. But I want to look at this verse 19 through 23 in John chapter 20. And the, the scripture says, then the same day at evening, and they're talking about Resurrection Sunday, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Let me read that again. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. So Jesus said to them again, peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. I just want to use a portion of this text this morning, uh, that verse that was so eloquently written, verse 20. And it says, when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Let us pray. Father, I decrease that the Holy Spirit might increase. Speak through my vocal cords. Think through my mind. Father, your word is anointed. It shall never return to your void, but it shall accomplish everything you send it out to do. Speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. It is in Jesus' name I pray. And all God's people said amen and amen. Amen. I want to talk about scars. Scars that produce victory. Scars that produce victory. In the text, John 20 verses 19 through 23, and Luke chapter 24, verses 34 through 48. Scars that produce victory. When one reads the resurrection story, one cannot help but be struck by the placement of the appeal by Jesus to his disciples to reach out and touch his scars. It is placed between doubt and unbelief, joy and faith, fear and faith. The writers of the gospel of Jesus Christ intend to demonstrate how the gospel transports a person from distress to peace, from fear to faith, from apathy to action, and we cannot ignore the importance of the scars that Jesus ret returned from the dead with as they were still on his body. Here, here is the situation. The disciples are locked away for fear of the Jews. They are cowering, huddled together in fear of their own lives. Fear, doubt, and unbelief reigning supreme in their lives. In that room, for them, the mission of Jesus is over. 
They walked with him and heard his powerful sermons. They had witnessed his mighty miracles. They had heard him pronounce that he and the father were one. He had even predicted his own death, burial, and that in three days he would be restored. He would be resurrected all in accordance with the scriptures. But that was Jesus's mission. And since he was no longer around, the disciples cowered behind those doors in paralyzed fear. That is, until he showed them his scars. Scars can be so powerful in the life of the believer. He, he arose with resurrection scars from the wounds he suffered in his feet, his hands, and his side. Yes, God had healed him and raised him, but Jesus appeared to them with the scars still on his body. And were it not for the scars, the disciples would not have recognized him. Only by seeing the scars could they accept his word of peace be with you. Only by seeing the scars could they tell Thomas, we have seen the Lord. For well, these scars were scars of faith, scars of integrity, and scars of victory. Let's, let's look at his scars of faith. You see, Jesus had faith. He was doing the will of God and that God would not leave his soul in hell. Jesus had enough faith to believe that neither death nor life could separate him from the love of God. He told Martha on that great occasion of Lazarus' death, he mm -hmm. said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He told the Pharisees, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. And for this reason, the father loves me because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. He told the disciples, I am the way the truth, and the life. But none of those words meant anything to others until they were proven in actuality. Words of faith he spoke to a lost and dying word. It world. It was these words that caused him to lay down at the cross and receive the nail marks in his hands and feet. For faith in God sometimes meaning means losing your life, not just receiving earthly gain and blessings. Not only that were they scars of faith, but Jesus also has scars of integrity. Let me back up one time and tell you that when you utter words of faith, you're going to be tested to see if you really believe what you're saying. Oh, be careful the words that come out of your mouth for the power and death and life are in the tongue. Be careful what you say because you will indeed eat the words that come out of your mouth. You will indeed reap the harvest from the words that come out of your mouth. And Jesus spoke words of faith that they might believe that he is a Christ, the son of the living God. But let me move on. Jesus had also scars of integrity. In other words, he spoke those words. His words was out. He could not take them back. He had prophesied that he would redeem mankind by his shed blood. He had accepted the role of Messiah, God's only begotten son. In the wilderness, he had refused a life of fame and fortune and chose the way of the cross. In the Garden of Gethsemane, he had uttered the fateful words, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. In other words, the die was cast. Now Jesus had to bleed and suffer. His integrity was on the line. And as he died, the centurion cried out, surely this man was the son of God. Why? Because Jesus 
maintained his integrity. He kept his word. He said what he meant and meant what he said and demonstrated it by giving his life on an old rugged cross. But that wasn't enough. They wanted to test him just a little bit further. And the Bible says they pierced him in his side. And the side is normally that place where it was said a man's fortitude, a man's courage, a man's strength resides. And the soldiers wanted to see how a man could be so committed to a cause that he would give up his life to see it through. No, no doubt Jesus inspired Dr. King to say, if a man hasn't found something he is willing to die for, he isn't fit to live. No doubt Jesus inspired General Patton to say, a coward dies a thousand deaths because when your integrity is lost, everything you are is on the line. And Jesus said, I said it, I meant it, and I'm going to see it through. And when they pierced him in his side, the Bible says out of his side came blood and water. The Bible says it was blood for redemption and water for remission of sins. This atoning, redeeming, forgiving act can only be found at the cross. That's why Miss Lizzie sang so wonderfully the hymn at the cross, at the cross where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight and now I'm happy all the day. Oh, there were scars of faith, scars of integrity. But finally, in the upper room, behind closed doors, Jesus showed them his scars of victory. Here stood Jesus, arisen from the dead, just as he said. The empty tomb made them run and hide. It was not proof, nor was it sufficient to overcome their fears. But when Jesus appeared before them with the scars on his body, no one could deny that it was he. No one could see Jesus with his scars and not believe. Luke goes a step further and says they had joy, but they wasn't quite happy yet. And so Jesus went a step further and he said, I see you still got a residue of doubt on you. So I want you to come over here and let's have some meal. Because you know, when we eat together, a spirit cannot eat. And so the Bible says, Luke says, Jesus sat down and supped with them. And then their joy became fully realized because they knew that he was indeed alive and well. They knew that he was indeed who he said he was. He, he didn't come to them in a body that was unfamiliar. His countenance was not radiating so brightly as on the Mount of Transfiguration. It was not so spiritual that they could not touch and feel the scars and then to have dinner with Jesus. It was Jesus and everyone knew it was Jesus. Beloved, in this world in which everybody is having various spiritual experiences, people claim to see Jesus all the time. But the next time someone brags about seeing Jesus, ask them, did you see the scars? Did you see the nail prints in his hand and feet? Did you see the wound in his side or did you just see a, a person wrapped in a radio white light? Did you see a person uh, that didn't have a blemish on his body? Did you see a person who, 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 whose radiant, radiance blinded you and you just knew it was, it was Jesus, but you didn't go further and say, Jesus, if it's really you, I wanna see the nail prints 
I, I want to see the scars of faith and scars of integrity and scars of victory. Why? Because anybody can have a spiritual encounter. Anybody can have a spiritual vision. But the yeah. Bible tells us when you have those types of experience, try the spirit by the spirit. And if the spirit does not confess that Jesus got up in his earthly body, it says, don't believe that spirit. Don't follow that spirit. You need to verify that the one who has come to you is Jesus. Yes, yes. And I want to say to you, some folks say grandmama came to me and some say granddaddy came to me, but, but you got to have a test. You just can't accept a word from a, from a, a, a spirit because they might be familiar spirits. Yes. Come on, somebody. You got yes. to ask them, well, grandmama, is that really you? What did Jesus look like? Granddaddy, if that's really you, did you see the nail prints in his hand? Did you see him seated at the right hand? Before you tell me anything, tell me about Jesus. Yes. <laughs> oh, Lord, Lord, have mercy. That's free right there. That's that's free right there. Don't, don't believe every spirit, for every spirit is not of God. All right, all right. And to us as believers, though, the greatest blessing is Blessed are those who have not seen, yet believe. So don't be looking for no experience. Just believe the word of Almighty God. And I want to tell you this morning, all of us have scars. If you have walked with the Lord in this life, you have some scars. You, you may not tell anybody, but nevertheless, they are there. Paul said, I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. He, he was not talking about the crucifixion. He was talking about sharing in the fellowship of Christ's suffering. He was talking about when they beat him uh, uh, all and left him for dead. He was talking about when he was shipwrecked and God saved him on broken pieces. He was talking about when they beat him so severely they had to let him down out of the city in a basket. He was talking about the Jews that were chasing him and scandalizing his name. He was talking about ever since I've told the old, old story, I've been buked and I've been scorned, talked about sure as you're born. And you ought to be having some of those experiences in your life today. The devil ought to be giving you the dickens because you stand and testify that Jesus rose not in spirit, but in his body, in his flesh. He got up early Sunday morning with all power in his hand. Folk don't mind you talking about he rose if you talking about a ghost. But if you talk about a human being that got up of his own volition, now they've got a problem because that's unduplicatable. <laughs> you can't duplicate what God produces. You, you, you know, you, you, you can try to be a uh, Frankenstein if you want to, but you can't <laughs> duplicate life. Only God has the power of life, to give life, to take life. Only God should be worshiped because God gives life and that more abundantly. All right. So now, if you really believe this message, I'm going to tell you, Satan is going to mark you for life. Somebody's going to put a scar on you. And it's really not a human being, but it all, it is the, the enemies of God. It is Satan and his angels. So when Jesus showed the disciples the scars that resulted from his integrity, from him standing by his word, they knew that Jesus was indeed Jesus. Satan is going to, take your, is going to attack your integrity. He's going to try to get you to retreat, to go back on what you said, you would do for the Lord. For in this way, Satan knows you put God's word to shame. And if Satan can get you to stop serving the Lord, then others will believe that God can do nothing for them that Satan is not doing already. But if you keep your word, yes, God yes. gives you strength to perform it. 
then your integrity will remain and you will produce scars of victory. Oh. And that's why that's when Satan, yeah. you know, he's gonna try to spread some lies and some rumors about them. But you just keep on being who God called you to be. He's yeah. gonna try to scandalize your name and tell somebody that you're not all of that in a bowl of chips. He's gonna try to tell somebody that God is really not in your life. He's going to try to, to slander you and, and scandalize your name. But, but if you can endure these scars of your character, if you can endure the bleeding ulcers that arise because you're holding in your pain, the high blood pressure and bad nerves because of all of the persecution you're going through, if you keep your hand in God's hand and say, I won't take nothing, for my journey, God will heal your body and set you free. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord, you will have scars of victory. You'll be able to tell somebody, Satan had me bound, but Jesus lifted me. You will be able to help somebody else who's going through hard trials and tribulations. And when they hear your story of how the Lord brought you out, they will listen because they will be able to see your scars of victory. Yes, I yes. Tell them what you went through in the midnight hour. Right. How you stayed up late at night talking with Jesus and yes. how God moved in on your behalf. Tell them about the scars that God has healed in your life, scars of faith scars of integrity and scars of victory or in the book of revelation we read this great passage they overcame satan by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony so tell your story today and bless somebody show them your scars show them your wounds tell them how you made it over strengthen their faith so they can overcome as well because when you know that your enemy is the devil and not your brothers and sisters, you'll be able to bless those who persecute you. Pray for those who despitefully use you. Love those who say all manner of evil against you. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Love those who hate you and give victory to Jesus. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord for what he has brought you through. Oh, you who have endured emotional abuse and survived, you ought to say thank you, Lord. Thank oh, you, Lord. you who have gone through physical and yeah. sexual oh, abuse yeah. and survived, you ought to say hallelujah to the Lamb of God. And for mm -hmm. those who have had to undergo surgery and came through to recovery and a brand new life, you ought to say praise the Lord praise for you have the scars that heal scars that can help others get through the rough side of life. Not only that, but as I close, if you have gone through the death of a loved one, the loss of a friend, a bitter divorce, survived a wayward child, you ought to tell somebody that the Lord will make a way somehow, that God will give them the victory, that God will allow them to heal and be a blessing to someone else. My friends, do you not know that Jesus rose from the dead as the first fruits of many brethren? He rose so that you and I could know that we too will rise again, that we too will overcome death, hell, and the grave, that we too can know for certain that the God we serve has all power in his hands. The scars we see on Jesus are scars of victory over Satan. They are scars that cause us to remember that no weapon formed against us can prosper. When we trust in God, we know that everything will be all right. Say that to yourself. Everything will be all right. No matter the pain, no matter the frustration, if we are faithful unto death, God has a crown of righteousness in store for us. Praise God for the blood of Jesus that washes and cleanses us from sin. Praise God for the resurrection of Jesus that attests to the power of our God. Praise God for what he has done 
in your life. You and you alone know what he's done and you ought to praise him now and forevermore. The Bible says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. God has done great things for us whereof we are glad. So beloved, we must rejoice. We must celebrate because God is good and his mercy endure forever unto all generations. We ought to know that the resurrection gives us cause to praise and bless the Lord. We ought to know that our God is a strong God. And so we give God praise for the resurrection. We give God praise for the scars of Jesus. And when hell hounds on our trail, we turn and face them and say, you can't do anything to me because I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus Christ. I've seen the lightning flashing. I've heard the thunder roll. I felt sin breakers dashing, trying to conquer my soul. But I overcame through the blood of the lamb and I'm giving you my word of testimony. Satan, you can't put me around anymore. I know the Lord will make a way somehow. I know they marched him through uh, the streets of the Ville de la Rosa. I knew they marched him on up Golgotha's hill. I know they laid him down and stretched him wide and put the nail marks in his hands and feet. I know they hung him high and stretched him wide and watched him die. But if death was not enough, they pierced him in his side, and out of his side came blood and water. But I know they put him in a borrowed tomb, and they walked away saying, it's finished. It's over. We don't have to worry about that Jesus anymore. But oh, I hear early on a Sunday morning, I hear the earthquake. I see the stone being rolled away. I see the angels coming to Jesus and giving him his instructions. And I hear them telling the women, he is risen just as he said. I hear Jesus says, Mary, go back and tell the disciples to meet me in Galilee. Why? Ah, because we're gonna have a good time. We're gonna sing, we're gonna shout. And when we get through with church, you're gonna go out and make disciples of all men. You're going to tell them what God has done through Jesus Christ. Beloved, show me your scars. Mm. Give me your testimony. Bless my life because I know that you have scars in your life, especially in this country. I know that you have scars aplenty and you're sitting down on those scars, but those scars are the very things that people need to see. <clears throat> you don't look like what you've been through. I know I'm right there. The devil has taken you through some tough times, but you know black don't crack. You don't look like what you've been through because you serve a very present help in time of trouble. Mm -hmm. You serve a God who will give you joy instead of letting you be stressed out. You serve a God who will give you hope in the midst of despair. You serve a God who's always present with you. And I give God praise this morning mm -hmm. for his word. Let us pray. Father, thank you for Jesus, for the scars that he bore in his body for us. Now, oh God, we too have scars. For when we have stood on your word and determined that we will not do anything contrary to your word, people laughed at us, asked us why we're letting those people get over on us. People talked about us and called us weak, called us all kinds of names, but we stood on your word. We soaked up all of the pain and it produced sickness in our bodies. But when the sickness came, oh God, you healed us. And in the end, oh God, you proved that what we had done was the correct action. We thank you, oh God, that we did not soil the name of Jesus. We did not bring the name of Jesus to shame. So God, through faith, 
through integrity, we obtain the victory. Help us, O oh God, to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. We give you praise now for our testimony, for we know that it is our testimony through which we will overcome every trap of the enemy. And we give you praise and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. amen. Give the Lord some praise. 